Hello, I'm Anita Kozan, and I'm from Minneapolis. Welcome to Bi Cities, a show by, for, and about the bisexual community, our friends and allies. I'm flying solo tonight in terms of, of uh, interviewing our guests this evening. My co-host, Marge Charmley, unfortunately has the flu, and so our shows this month are, uh, are without her uh, witty and pithy comments. But uh, I know that I'll hear about it from Marge if I say or do anything wrong. So I hope that I'll stay on good track here. <laughs> so I want to, we have some very interesting guests on this show. But before I introduce them, I want to say uh, again this evening, as I did in the beginning of our other show this month, that we are filming and remembering and honoring John Townsend. John was the most uh, wonderful person to work with, author, writer, actor, producer, director, coach in theater, and Lavender Magazine was fortunate to have his services since their inception in 1995. John died suddenly, unexpectedly, at the young age of 60. Uh, of uh, causes related to hypertension. And I did want to just this evening say, uh, if you have not already done so, please take a look at uh, the Lavender Magazine article written by Chris Tarbox, which is just a beautiful tribute to John. And I also want to mention and thank the people, including Chris and good friends of, of John Townsend, John Scallon, Christopher Tekelo, uh, Tykelo, I beg your pardon, Michael John Pease, and uh, others, if I've forgotten you, I beg your pardon, but the wonderful group who put together the, the memorial service and the celebration of John's life at Park Square Theater. Thank you so much. So John, you are, you are with us forever. You are a good friend. You are on the show a number of times. And your work and your memories of, of you and your uh, amazing qualities will live on. All right. So this evening, we're going to talk about some wonderful uh, events that are coming up at uh, the Uprising Theater Company in the Twin Cities. And tonight we are going to hear from uh, the artistic director, Shannon T.L. Kearns, and from the director of the first play of the 2020 season, Ashley Hovell. So welcome, Ashley. Welcome, Shannon, to Buy Cities. We're so glad that you're here. And uh, I love your shirt. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Stories to change the world. Yeah. And that speaks of your theater project. It does. That's our mission, really. We're believing that stories can change the world uh, and that authentic representation in those stories are what matters and it can really change both the community that's represented but also people outside of that community. How did, uh, I know we have some fine theater companies in the Twin Cities. How did um, your company form? There's kind of two, two kind of inception stories. One comes way back when I was in college. I'm a transgender man. Uh, I grew up in a really conservative community. And I remember as a college student watching Boys Don't Cry, that film starring Hilary Swank. And I remember being so struck by that film because in that moment, I remember feeling not alone, that there was someone else like me and I had never seen that before. But I also remember taking away a message from that film that there was really on, only one future for someone like me and that it was would end in death and disaster. And th I believe that because it was literally the only story that I ever saw. And so after I came out many years later and kind of became confident in my own identity, um, both as a transgender person, as a bisexual person, I started to think about well, what are the stories that aren't being told? There are still so many stories that end in death for trans folks in the media, and I wanted to start telling different stories. And I realized that if, if I wanted those stories to be told, I had to be a part of telling them. 
So that's one of the reasons that we started the company. The other reason is I was in a production of The Laramie Project as an actor, um, which is that great piece about the death of Matthew Shepard. Yes. Uh, and I was really struck by audience reaction to the end of it. There were some folks that came up afterwards and said, you know, thank God this doesn't happen anymore. And I remember thinking, w I, <laughs> what world are you living in that, that you believe that? But then the other piece of, was people who said, you know, we have all of this energy and we don't know what to do with it. And they walked out of the theater and that was it. And I started to think of what if there's a way that we could do high quality theater that talks about social justice issues, but then that makes the next step into action really easy. And so that's how Uprising was born. Uh, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> you rock. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So when did you do this? When did you start this? We started in 2015 with a Kickstarter campaign to see if we could fund one production and that campaign was successful, so we did one show. Um, so the, for our first couple seasons, we did two shows a year. Now, for the last two seasons, we've done four shows a year. We're up into a, f a full season for us, which is four shows. And it's been really lovely and wonderful to be kind of piloting a new model of theater. For heaven's sakes. <laughs> How did we get so lucky that you're <laughs> you're here and you're doing this? Because this this is not your hometown. You said you were born, you were you're from elsewhere. I'm from Pennsylvania. I, I moved here about ten years ago. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Well, you've survived the winter. <laughs> <laughs> Many of you them know, now. <laughs> you know what it's like. Yeah. And I said the same thing to our guest uh, Zaylar Stout, our other show, who has who moved here from California. Ooh. And uh, you know. But, but shoveling, he and his partner have been shoveling. They, they know what it's like. So, yeah. so um, to get to the point now, so you have a season. We do. So, and, and with, with the, the um, goal of inclusivity for uh, writers, for the authors, for, for the directors, for the performers, for the crew, tell more about getting to here and and what you're what you're envisioning for this upcoming season yeah so our 2020 season is going to be all plays by transgender and non-binary playwrights we're super excited uh, we've got really phenomenal talent that and and stories that just are so rich uh, we're going to tell you more about one of those in, in a little bit and so we're super excited to be doing this work uh, what i've been realizing is that you know there there's a lot of kind of hype around trans visibility uh, but it's not always led by trans folks right often mm -hmm. the stories are told by people who aren't from the trans community they're acted by people who aren't trans and so we're really trying to center the stories of trans folks from their own lives and mouths and because I think we have a lot more to talk about than just coming out or transitioning, right? We want to talk about mm -hmm. reproductive health or starting families or LGBT youth homelessness, right? Like these are all part of our stories. And so we're really looking at a, at a broader lens of the trans experience and telling lots of stories, which is exciting. So we're gonna be doing four shows again next season. Uh, we'll partner with community organizations for every one of those shows. Um, those community partners are doing work that's around the issue of the show, and they come and they make an ask of the audience um, that's something beyond giving money. So it's um, donating their time or items, and so that's, that's gonna be a really exciting part of, oh of the season as well. Gosh, have you done that in the past? In yes. That's from the very beginning, that's, that's what we do. So we've partnered with organizations like Transforming Families, like the Women's Prison Book Project, Outfront Minnesota. Um, Sexual Violence Center. Sexual Violence Center, yeah. We've just amazing organizations in the Twin Cities. I gotta keep it rolling here because <laughs> I'm, like, I'm just taking it in going, this is so incredible, this is so great. It's been really fun. <laughs> oh, wow. So, are you Ms. Ashley, are you a yes. hometown girl, or are you from? Well, a I'm from Wisconsin, place, so from Wisconsin? I mean, same kind of thing. But yeah, well, just from. A, I know that's <laughs> maybe controversial to say, but winters, as far as winters yes, go, yes. I know what it's like here. <laughs> so yeah, Very so from so. Um, right across the river of Winona in the Lacrosse area. So. All right. Yeah. So, 
you are going to be directing a play. How did yeah. you come to this point in your life as a director? I mean, this is... Yeah, so I um, majored in theater in college. Um, so I have my, my BA in, in theater performance. So I started as an actor, still do acting. Um, directing kind of came about a little later. So I've been do directing a few years. Um, yeah, it's it, I just started to realize that I kind of had an eye for the stage picture um, and, and got really interested in, you know, what would happen if I took on a leadership role of creating more than just my own performance. So um, Uprising gave me an opportunity to kind of play around with that. So yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Well, you said something to me before we went on the air and I loved it so much <laughs> I wrote it down. You said that you see yourself as being queer adjacent. Yes. Um, a lot of my community is made up of the LGBTQA plus community. So yeah, I, I consider myself a very strong, close ally. Um, so that's kind of why I think of myself as queer adjacent. So That's a wonderful <laughs> term. I'm, I'm yeah. going to try to use that again somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about the play, um, the author and the play. Yeah, so um, it's it's called Dr. Voynich and Her Children, written by Leanna Keyes. Um, it's about um, a, a transgender woman who um, serves as an herbalist, is that what the title is? Um, but basically it kind of travels around um, a futuristic America um, where things are maybe not looking so great. And so she travels around with her apprentice um, and they, they do medical care through kind of more natural um, means. So there's, um, it's plant-based kind of going back to the natural roots of, of herbalism. Um, and so she comes back to a small town that she's visited before where she has some relationships with some of the locals um, and that kind of brings about some complications um, and addresses issues of outlawing abortion and what happens when uh, women don't have and men don't have the right to um, abortion that they might need um, or medical care that they might need and what happens when science disappears and we don't have sexual health education and we don't have um, the knowledge to kind of explain ourselves and um, our sexuality and also just health in general. It sounds like, I mean, a really challenging topic. It is a challenging topic. Um, there are pieces of the show that are, are hard to deal with um, just because of you know the abortion issue. Um, but I think it's important to talk about. I think it's important for people to see and um, to think about, um, especially if you haven't gone through something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and with the topic of abortion specifically, it's so controversial and so kind of, um, it's not black and white. Mm -hmm. And so we need to start having those conversations, uh, especially with our current administration, the way things are going and um, the way that laws are kind of changing and kind of reverting back to where we were instead mm -hmm. of going forward. Yes. I'm very curious with the title, mm -hmm. I'm, and sometimes I'm very concrete in how <laughs> I think about things. So are there children in the show? So it's really more a play of, um, on Dr. Voynich, or sorry, uh, Mother Courage and her children. Um, and so it's inspired by that play by Bertolt Brecht. Um, and so it is kind of post, in my mind, kind of post Civil War, if we were to have a Civil War. Um, it talks about the post Pence era. Um, and so, oh yeah, it kind of envisions what would happen if we have a conservative government that kind of takes away a lot of rights for ourselves and um, yeah, kind of goes backwards as far as progressivism goes. I mean, really it strikes me that this is the kind of play that would be censored, would not be allowed mm -hmm. in, in you know, the past mm -hmm. and yeah. hopefully not in the future, but yeah. certainly in some countries mm -hmm. around the world right now. Mm -hmm. Well, wow. so and so is Mother Courage, which is I think another interesting tie-in. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that you know that that was banned in some places, um, and so to kind of modernize that and put it into a perspective of could this happen again? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, 
So it'll be really interesting and fascinating to put that on. Well, how did Leanna Keys get her play to you? We found it on New Play Exchange, which is this really amazing new resource where playwrights can upload new work uh, and, and share it. And so that's been where we found a lot of our new work. It's a fantastic resource for, for companies that are championing new voices. And we found that script and read it. And I was like, we have to do this. We have wow. to do this here. New Play Exchange. New Play Exchange. And I mean, do you have to be a professional in order to access the site or? Anyone can access the site. In order to read, you have to become a member of the site, but it's like $8 a month, which is nothing. Yeah, uh, and it's, really. a, it's a really fantastic resource. Wow. Yeah. So Liana is not uh, from the neighborhood. Correct. Right. Yeah, she's from not the East local. Coast. For heaven's sakes, yeah. this is <laughs> wonderful. I mean, you think about, I mean, I love Google being able to look something up you know, really quickly, but, but that this kind of information exchange can be happening yeah. at this level. Yeah. And I think it's really important also for marginalized groups of people um, because mainstream theater might not otherwise pick up on those voices. So I think it's really great that there's a way for them to put their work out there so that other people can find them um, in an independent sort of way. Yeah. What, uh, I know that you're going first in the new season. Yes. Um, when, when does the play uh, mount and for how long will it run? Yeah, so we open in March. Uh, March 6th. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll go for three weekends. Oh my gosh. All right, well, that's very exciting. I'm thinking, I'm gonna be in North Carolina. Can I make it home you know, <laughs> <laughs> in time to see it? But. Uh, uh, you, and yours is the first yes. of the season. Mm -hmm. So can you give us some hints about what's coming up the rest <laughs> sure. of the season? Uh, we've got two other shows that are confirmed and one that is still in the works. Um, we've got a new work called Skimmers by Anthony Sisler Newman. It's a work around um, family planning and it's, it's an absurdist comedy is how he's describing it. Anthony's uh, a local playwright and um, is on the board of Uprising, so we're super excited to be doing one of his works. It's going to be really fantastic. And then the final show in our season is called The Place That Made You. It's by Darcy Parker Bruce. It's a modern retelling of the Jonah and the Whale story. Um, and it's oh my a, gosh. this brilliant and beautiful play around um, gay folks in rural areas, LGBT folks in rural areas, and, and what it is that makes family and what makes home. Those are the questions that it's asking. It's it's a gorgeous play. Super excited to, to oh do that gosh. one. Oh my gosh! Who are the uh, the um, organizations? Who are the people who are collaborating with you to present uh, the plays this year? We uh, we don't have them for 2020 yet. Ah. Uh, we we're just finishing up our 2019 season, uh, where <coughs> we've partnered. We did an entire season on gun violence, so we partnered with Moms Demand Act for our entire season, which was really fantastic. Oh we partnered with groups like Better Angels, which is a group that helps folks from opposite ends of the political spectrum have conversations with one another, which is needed <laughs> and necessary right now. Um, we've had some groups from outer state Minnesota, some LGBT groups come and, and be with us, which has been really beautiful and fun. So it's, it's been lovely. And so we're excited to, to dive in and figure out who's going to be our partners for 2020. Tell us more about the groups from Greater Minnesota coming in because, you know, that is, it's, it's a heck of a lot harder to be living uh, outside the urban, big urban areas in the state. Yeah, our final show in our 2019 season was a new work called In a Stand of Dying Trees. It talked about trans folks who live in rural areas and, and what that's like. And so we really wanted to make sure that we reached out to people in our own community in, in greater Minnesota. And a couple of groups came and saw the show and brought people from their community. Um, there's a, a fantastic group in Brainerd called Project Rainbow that does organizing work around this, and they talked about how dangerous and hard it is, um, but also how grateful they are for their own community. And someone said, they said, you know, we don't have all of the LGBT stuff like you all have in the cities, but we have each other. 
And I found that that was a really beautiful, um, a beautiful sentiment. Like they feel like they have community and that they don't feel alone. And, and, and they're then creating that for other people and doing a lot of work for youth, which is just beautiful to see. Wow. Well, I am really excited to see what's, you know, I, I wanted to say, what's up your sleep? <laughs> <laughs> what, what you're thinking about, you know, of what organizations you're going to work with. It's a wonderful concept. Yeah. We have uh, about six minutes left. What are things that would be most of, of interest for you to share with our audience about the theater? And, oh, I do have one question about um, uh, auditioning. Mm -hmm. and, yes. and the people who, who work with the theater, you know, behind the scenes. Um, how, do you, how do you find people? Mm -hmm. What, you know, do you have a, a regular crew for every show? Does it change? Yeah, it, uh, it definitely changes. We do have kind of a, a, a core group, I guess, that we try to pull from, but it, they don't, they're not always available. But we will be having auditions um, probably at the end of December, middle of December for Dr. Voynich and her children. So keep an eye out for that on um, Minnesota Playlist. We'll probably post there. Um, we also have an auditions um, mailing list. So you can go on our website uh -huh. and sign up for the auditions list when we just send out messages. Anytime we're having auditions, um, we'll send it to your email. Who can audition? Anyone. Anyone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. We um, it, obviously it depends on the show and and what the cat what the script calls for. But we work with folks that are have been acting forever. Folks who are brand new to acting. We're happy to work with people all along that spectrum. If I know we've got a couple minutes, and if I know I, I was going to turn it over to you, and now I'm thinking, I wanted I wanted you just to mention this amazing intensive. Thing our um, <clears throat> uh, Mel uh, from our from our crew. That's how she said you've got to have, you know, you've got to have Shannon on the show and talk about the season. What what was this intensive week or things that you also do? That was part of the theater project yeah. too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we started this in August uh, August of last year. We did a two week acting intensive for transgender and non binary actors. What we found is that often trans folks uh, either didn't get the training that other folks had or they have taken a long break from acting and wanted to get back into it and needed, needed to brush up their skills. So we wanted to create a, an intensive that was safe and that was trans competent. So we brought in trans teaching artists from all over the Twin Cities to teach this two week intensive. We're waiting to find out if we got grant funding. So hopefully we're gonna do it again and make it an annual thing. Yes. So, um, it, but it was, it was a really lovely event and we're hoping to, to do more of that, to do both more acting training, but also playwright development for trans and non-binary playwrights. And, but the actor intensive is also available to anybody. Uh, mm -hmm. if anyone who identifies as trans or non-binary. Okay. All right. Very the good. point being that if anyone uses the excuse that they cannot find a trans or non-binary actor to play a n trans or non-binary role, we have a plethora of them. Yes. So it is no longer an excuse for anyone. Yeah. And there is also, if I'm remembering right, um, there is actually, it's either a website or some place, uh, some listing on the internet where you can find local actors who, who, uh, who are in the GLBT community. Am I remembering that right? Is that? I don't know about that. Oh gosh. I mean, <laughs> I would love that resource though. If you find it. Okay, <laughs> I will. I will. Uh, I'll check with Mel. She might remember yeah. uh, or uh, some of our crew. Okay, so now we've got two minutes. What else <laughs> would you two like to say? Well, I, we would just love more folks to connect with us. Come, come see shows, sign up for the mailing list, um, come visit the work that we're doing. We're always looking for, for more folks to connect with. It's been really powerful to do this work, and we just want to introduce it to more people. Well, I am just, I am thrilled to <laughs> get me on the mailing list, you know, so. Yeah. So, um, and what, what do you look forward to? What, are you, you want to do another play in the following season, or what are you thinking I'm about? I'm always on board to do stuff with Uprising. I think what they do is really um, different from 
other theaters. Mm -hmm. um, we have a plethora of theaters in the Twin Cities, but this one is something special. Um, and the only way to really understand how special it is is to come see the shows. So the biggest thing you can do for us is to fill our audiences. Um, visit our website, find out when and where we're doing things, and just show up. Are you in Minneapolis or St. Paul? Currently, we're in Minneapolis, uh -huh. um, but we move around a lot. So um, coming up with for this season, we're at Off Leash Art Box area for all of our shows. Um, and we'll kind of see what next season brings. We have to say that again. <laughs> off Leash Art Box area. It's Off Leash Art Box in South Minneapolis. OK. Yeah. All right. That's amazing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, I just, this has been such a great month for me of these, filming these two shows of just the incredible resources that we have in the Twin Cities and how we continue, I think, to, if, if we're not at the forefront, if we're not the leaders, we're certainly at the forefront with others who are doing wonderful, inclusive things and doing the teaching. And I love that about what you are participating in. I, uh, I want to encourage all of, our, all of our audience to go to the website for Uprising Theater Company. And Shannon, and do you, do, do you use TL always as part I of do. your name? Yes. I love it, all right. <laughs> Shannon TL Kearns, that is very, very cool. <laughs> uh, the artistic director, thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. And Ashley Hobble. Wow, wow, <laughs> the, the, the name that sounds like a, a director to follow here, definitely <laughs> to be seeing what Thank you're you. up to. Thank you so much, Thank both you. of you, for taking the time to be here. I'm gonna ask you to join me in saying goodbye. Yes. Bye, Bye for, for now. now. Yeah,